Hello, welcome to Art of the Light. My name is Sayıcı Pelin Çankaranan. In this video, I'm gonna run through a complete guide about Turkish coffee. Being Turkish myself, this is very close to my heart. Today, I'm going to show you the methods of making Turkish coffee, where can you find a good quality Turkish coffee, and how can you make every time perfectly at home. At the end of this video, I will also going to show you a few different variations that you may enjoy. So let's get started. In Turkey, Turkish coffee is not just a beverage. It's a culture and a part of many traditions. We say a single cup of coffee is remembered for 40 years. It's a symbol of hospitality, friendship and entertainment. Turkish coffee is unfiltered coffee, made by roasting the beans to bring out the hidden flavors and then finally grinding them into its unique powder-like texture. You may see Turkish coffee made in hot sand, on coals, on the stove or in a coffee maker. The idea behind all cooking methods is to brew it slowly to get the best taste. If you really want to experience Turkish coffee taste, I would recommend you going with a Turkish brand. In my first days of being in Australia, I saw a Turkish style coffee in the supermarket and I grabbed it. I was like, oh, I found my Turkish coffee and made it, but it ended up disappointing. It was nowhere near like a Turkish coffee. So make sure if you buy a Turkish coffee, make sure it is a Turkish coffee, not a style. <laughs> Later on I found that actually Turkey's most common Turkish brand was exporting all around the world, which I didn't know before. So you can find them in Middle Eastern or Turkish grocery stores or you can find it online so easily. It is Turkish brand Kuru Kahveci Mehmet Efendi which uh, is the most common brand actually and they are since 1871 they're in the same store doing the same job if you want to try this i would strongly recommend this one and let me introduce you to Cezve Cezve is a turkish coffee pot and it has sizes and it is believed that the best turkish coffee is made in copper Cezve which i haven't seen any difference frankly so as long as you breathe it slowly, they will be all fine. And since I used to use Jezre before, but it's been a long time I started using a coffee machine, which is looks like a Jezre, but it's an electric one and that works fine for me at the moment. And let's get breathing. Firstly, I want to show you the Turkish coffee cups. We're going to use them as a measuring cup. These are standard sizes and which is equal with the espresso cups. If you have espresso cup, that will work fine. And this one is smaller compared to those ones. I'll start with making with this one first. To make a Turkish coffee, we will need, of course, a Turkish coffee. Cezve, if you don't have Cezve, you can use a small saucepan too. Water and a cup. I have my coffee without sugar, so I'm going to show you a plain one today. If you want to have your coffee with sugar, you should add that before putting it on the stove. If you add a half teaspoon of sugar for each cup, it is called medium. If you add a teaspoon of sugar for each cup, it is called with sugar in Turkey. Now I'm going to start with adding a heaped teaspoon of coffee into Cezve. This much. I'm going to measure water with the cup. You don't want to fill the water right to the top. Leave a little bit space like this for the coffee. And adding this. If you want to add sugar, now you can add the sugar. And I'm just going to mix this on this stage. Then after I'm not going to touch it because there are two things that you may want to consider when it comes to Turkish coffee making. First, brew it on the low heat. Second, don't stir it. If you apply those two rules, you'll be always fine. Now I'm not going to touch this till it is ready. 
Just before boiling, I will take this from the heat. As you can see, now is the time to take it from the heat. I forgot to mention that you shouldn't use hot water on it because it needs to breathe slowly. So make sure you're using on the room temperature or cold water. Now I'm gonna make it in coffee machine so that you can see. There's no difference between making it in coffee machine or in Jezre actually. The same measurements, the same techniques, everything is same. I'm going to show you now for two coffees with these small cups. I wanted to show you the difference. These cups are almost a half of this cup. So I'm going to add water again in this cups to measure, leaving a bit of space so that coffee can settle. Now I'm going to make two, so I'm going to add two cups of water. Because these are half size of the other cups, as you can see, almost half size it comes to here. So I'm going to add a big heaped teaspoon of coffee. I will add this time. Oops. I made a mess. <laughs> I cleaned my mess. Now I'm going to just once mix this. Then not going to touch it anymore. Okay. Now I'm going to stop this. I put them half off because I want to distribute the foam equal to each cups. I prepared my Sarah's tray and add a bit of chocolate. It is so good with chocolate or traditionally served with a Turkish delight or any kind of sweet is good near it actually. Those were the traditional ways of making Turkish coffee, which is with the water. Now I want to show you two other variations that you may enjoy. This is the milky Turkish coffee. This time we're going to add milk instead of water, that everything will be the same otherwise. And you can see how did I fill the milk only till here and left a bit of space for the coffee. Adding the milk and the heaped teaspoon of coffee. Like this. Again, I'm going to make plain one. If you want to add sugar, you can add in this stage. Again now, putting on the low heat and not going to touch it anymore. By the way, Turkish coffee machines are not meant for milky versions. So if you will going to use a Turkish coffee machine, make sure you're not making a milky one in it. Now I'm making Turkish coffee with the cardamom. The only difference is I'm going to add a pinch of cardamom in it. You can be as creative as you want. You can also add a pinch of cinnamon or you can make a milky cardamom Turkish coffee too. I just wanted to show you all the versions then, so that you can use your creativity. It is customary to serve water near the Turkish coffee. There are two reasons for that. Drinking before the coffee will help you taste better. Drinking after the coffee will be cleaning your throat from the leftover coffee grounds. And the coffee grounds will be settling at the bottom of the cup and the water part will be consumed. And the ground part will be the <laughs> will help the fortune tellers to look at your fortune. Let me know if you try making Turkish coffee and I would like to hear which one is your favorite. Consider subscribing my channel so that you can find out upcoming delightful recipes. Cheers!